If you suspect that someone you know or love is struggling with dementia, then watch till the end of this video to know what to look for so that you know how to help them. Hey, I'm Dr. Sam McDonald, brain health expert, helping you rewire your brain so you can live a better life. If you love this content, make sure to like and subscribe so you get the notifications for each week's new video. So the question that we're answering is, how does stress affect dementia? And in order to answer this, we first need to define a couple terms. What is dementia and what is stress? So we have some common understanding. So first of all, dementia is an umbrella term for cognitive decline. It, it affects, it looks at how does cognitive decline, which is forgetfulness, which is working memory, which is social interaction, all those sorts of things. How does that affect things like forgetfulness and being able to operate in your daily life or daily function. So anything that's going to affect those would fall under this category of dementia. Now, stress is defined as anything that's going to move you away from how your body functions in a healthy, restful state. So we would define this as what's called homeostasis, which is the baseline function of how your body is in a rested state. The example I always like to give people is think of like a nice still flat glass pond, so nothing is causing ripples on it, and anything that's going to cause a ripple in that pond would be considered a stress. Your body functions in a similar way. If there's anything that's going to move your body away from that nice flat glass surface, that's going to be a stress to you, and your body has to adapt to that to bring you back to that homeostasis or that basic function. So we break down stress in our office in three ways. You have chemical stress, you have physical stress, and you have emotional stress. All those different categories can lump pretty much all of our life experience, which is going to move us away from that homeostasis point into stress. And then our body has to adapt to be able to get back to that homeostasis point. Now, where we run into problems is when our body cannot properly adapt. Thus, we go into a stress response, which our body goes into what's called fight or flight, which is going to lead us to altered physiological functions which ultimately, if left in this state for too long, cause the body to break down. So let's talk about the brain in terms of this stress response and what happens if you're stuck in the stress response too long and how that can lead you into a state of cognitive decline. So the multiple different parts of the brain that are gonna be affected that we're gonna talk about to keep it simple are going to be, we'll first start with the frontal lobe. So right here behind your eyebrows, your frontal lobe is the most advanced part of your brain. It's your executive decision-making, it's your judgment, it's your inhibition, and it's how you plan for things in the future. This is really what makes us human because we're really one of the few creatures out there that can abstractly think about what's gonna happen in the future. And as you can imagine, this is a double-edged sword because we can think about really amazing things like flying cars or skyscrapers or alternative energy, all these different things that can solve problems in our life. But at the same time, this can also be a negative thing because we can then perseverate on negative things. Oh my gosh, what's the, you know, what's the next bad thing that's going to happen? We can look at the news and watch what's the next horrible event that's going to affect us in our life and cause this downward spiral as well. Well, when it comes to cognitive decline, what starts to happen is you get a wasting away of this frontal lobe due to this increase in stress response. So think of like a teeter-totter. You have the frontal lobe activating that inhibits this lower brain function in the stress response. And when that stress response starts to turn on, it starts to shut off that frontal lobe function. That's why if you ever get into a fight with your significant other, you start to ramp up that stress response and maybe say something that you don't mean in the moment and you regret it later because you weren't using your judgment and inhibition to say, hey, maybe I shouldn't say that to this person that I love and care for. So that frontal lobe over time starts to waste away. When that happens, that then affects your judgment inhibition. And this is why people that have a cognitive decline issue will maybe say things in public that you know, may be a little bit taboo or maybe it's not appropriate to say. Or maybe they'll do something that's like, well, why are they doing that? Why are they starting to act more like a child instead of like a grown adult? Well, it's because they're losing this inhibition and this judgment and these understanding of social cues, which is going to cause them to then act out and act more like a child versus an adult. So again, the next part I've already mentioned is going to be the lower brain center inside, and that's going to be your stress response centers. This is where the stress response is really going to come from, and that's going to start to ramp up more. It's going to grow more. Think of like the areas we usually refer to the amygdala, and that's all part of what's called the limbic system, and this is where your fight or flight response lives. So that area is going to start to grow, and it's going to be active more often, and that's going to shut off the frontal lobes. 
Now, what also starts to happen is as the frontal lobes start to waste away, our body posture is gonna to start to change. We're gonna get more into this stress dominant posture, meaning that our flexor muscles in our body, in our upper body, it's gonna be our pecs, biceps, it's gonna to start to roll everything forward this way. So you'll start to see a person, their shoulders are gonna come up, their whole body's gonna to start to roll forward this way, and the hamstrings are gonna to start to get really tight in the lower body because the flexors are in the legs, on the back of the legs in the lower body, and you'll start to have this increase in tightness. And what typically happens when a person has an increase in flexor tone, it's usually gonna be asymmetrical for one, and because we're walking around always under gravity, that's gonna to start to cause postural distortions, which is gonna to start to cause asymmetrical wearing out of the joints. So people will notice, hey, they start to overuse one side in a postural deficit or a postural problem. So they've got this, think of like a car that's out of alignment, they've got these alignment issues, now they're overusing one side of the body versus the other in a gravitational field, which we live on in Earth. That is going to start to cause asymmetrical breakdown of the joints, which is gonna cause pain. When people feel pain, they typically like to move less. And when you start to move less, this is going to affect the back of the brain that's called the cerebellum. Cerebellum is responsible for balance and coordination, smooth muscular movement, but that's gonna help, that's gonna to start to affect somebody in terms of all this muscular posture and it's gonna to start to break down the body more and more that way. That's really important too because the cerebellum is like the conductor for the entire brain. So when the brain, when the cerebellum starts to go offline or starts to function poorly, now the whole brain system is gonna be affected. It's gonna to start to then throw off the timing coordination of the entire brain in terms of how it shares information from the front of the brain to the back of the brain, from the sides of the brain, which is just gonna cause this whole other calamity of issues. One of the other things that we see that's affected with people with cognitive decline, back onto the stress piece, is the temporal lobes. So the temporal lobes are right above your ears, and what happens there is the temporal lobes are responsible mainly for hearing, for our superior visual fields, and it's also really closely associated with what's called the hippocampus, which is our memory centers. One of the things that we test in the office with anybody that we suspect that has a cognitive decline issue is smell. So smell is a, is a very far leading indicator of cognitive decline. So if you're a person who does not smell very well, this can start to lead to a decrease in function of the temporal lobes, which is going to then cascade into down the road potential problems with cognitive decline. Now stress plays a very important role in this because stress really destroys and damages the hippocampus and the memory centers of our brain, specifically short-term working memory, which is why people that have dementia or other cognitive decline issues will typically start to lose first working memory problems. So not being able to like remember how to load a dishwasher, how does a dishwasher work, how do I do laundry, how do I do this task that I've been doing for 20 years, now all of a sudden I can't remember how to do it, well, it's because you're destroying your short-term memory centers and the brain is starting to slow down. So that's another issue that we see, and this is primarily affected because of the stress response and sleep. So when you're not sleeping well, you're not moving that short-term memory problem, that short-term memory function to long-term memory, which is going to lead to that procedural thing that I talked about. So to recap, because you can see how this all gets a complex very quickly and how multiple different parts of the brain are gonna be affected because the whole brain works together as a unit. So remember, you've got your frontal lobes, which is responsible for your social judgment, inhibition, how you function, and your executive decision making, that's gonna to start to get destroyed because stress is going to become too dominant. It's gonna increase in your limbic system, shutting off the frontal lobes. When that happens, you start to get that stress posture, which is gonna affect one side or the other, depending on what your compensations are. That's gonna increase pain, which is gonna decrease your movement, which is gonna to start to destroy your cerebellum and your balance, and all of a sudden, you're not gonna to wanna to move you're gonna to wanna to move less and less and less because now you're not comfortable on your feet. And stress is also gonna to start to destroy the memory centers, those areas that are associated with smell and short-term working memory, as well as sleep and how that affects all of that too. So again, it's very complex, it's very difficult, and if it can be caught early enough, amazingly, dementia can actually be reversed. It just takes time, repetition, and catching it early enough in the cycle before it becomes full-blown and a person is actually too far gone. So on that note, you should be healthy by choice, not by chance. And for that reason, I will see you on the next video.